Welcome back. If you have not seen the previous videos, then please watch them first because the information follows from one video to another uh, and things will make sense when you actually watch this one. Now, we mentioned that we have those 10 uh, short line segments, we have their co coordinates and we wanted to find, we wanted to split them into, into two groups of five and each five dashes uh, form this big dashed line right we want the coordinates the coordinates of this dashed line now we spoke briefly about the representation remember the two important things that we need to decide when we try to solve a problem using genetic algorithms is the representation of the solution and the fitness function how to evaluate the solution right so we'll create an array of size 10 to hold the coordinates of the 10 dashes so dashes this is the dashes array these are x1 y1 x2 y2 of each dash this is the first dash second dash third dash and so on and so forth after that we'll create a chromosome matrix this is our population now 30 by 10 so it will have 30 candidate solutions the 30 is the number of uh, this is the size of the population or the number of candidate solutions it should be big enough it could be any size actually but just big enough to allow some dominant solutions to form right and each member of, of, of this matrix is of size 10 as we said because we have 10 dashes it will be a binary array of size 10 and it represents it's a chromosome so it's a possible or, or a candidate solution right so it looks like this for example one possible solution might look like this and remember we said before that uh, the ones will represent one array so one possible dashed line the zeros will represent another possible dashed line and remember these will use the indices here to access the actual coordinates in the dashes array right so uh, if we group these ones together then we end up with dash 1 dash 4 dash 5 dash 7 dash 9 because the coordinates are 1 uh, 4 5 7 and 9 likewise for the zeros right that, that's the other group that form the other line so we'll use the indices of ones and zeros to access the coordinates in the dashes array that's what we mentioned so in java this will look like this the genes matrix genes or chromosomes or uh, 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 possible candidate solutions they're all the same thing right you just use these words interchangeably right 30 members of 10 line segments each it'll be just a, a integer matrix right now so this is the representation or the encoding this is the first problem the second problem now is the fitness how do we evaluate each candidate solution well we'll do uh, uh, the following thing because we have two arrays now in each solution uh, the array represented elements represented by the ones and the other one rep represented by the zeros and each of them will be of size 5 right so what we're going to do is the following we will check the first for each of these two arrays now yeah because each of them we we're going to assume each of them represents one dashed line formed of five smaller dashes we will for each array we will check the first element against the second the second against the fourth the four the third i'm sorry the third against the fourth and the fourth against the fifth so four pairwise comparisons remember we said we are going to assume that the, array, the the small dashes are in the right order so this is the first dash in the in the dashed line this is the second dash the third dash the fourth dash the fifth dash otherwise we will end up in this permutation problem and we'll come to that in the next video but let's assume just we are, we know the order already so these are in the right order right now for each for for these comparisons we will check for adjacency and collinearity of the of the dashes that we compare right so we will return the number of adjacent and collinear pairs what that means is the following if we compare the first element against the second and we find that these two elements are adjacent and collinear then that's one if the second and the third are adjacent and collinear that's two if the third against the fourth if they are adjacent and collinear and then that's that's three and that, so on and so forth i'm sorry i think i said, I said four so one two three and four right we are going to ignore uh, uh, the concept of dash dash length at the moment right so we'll assume all the dashes have the right length they are short enough to form a dash right so we'll only check for adjacency and collinearity if the number is four then these elements do actually form a dashed line segment if the two arrays return four then we have found the solution because each of them now forms a dashed line and that's exactly what we want 
if the two are in fact if only one of them returns four then the other one will necessarily return four because return four because we said it um, the the array the dashes are in in the right order if the two arrays do not return four however then we'll sum the results to compare uh, we'll use the result to compare against other solutions right so the sum of the result will be the actual uh, um, fitness of the candidate solution if the fitness is eight then we found the solution if the fitness is is less than eight so if both don't return four then we'll just sum them for example if one returns three i.e it has three adjacent and collinear pairs the other one returns two it has two adjacent and collinear pairs then the sum will be five and that will be the fitness or the evaluation of that candidate solution another one may be the sum may be for example six then the second one is the winner and the previous one is the loser because the loser has the less fitness i hope it makes sense in the next video we'll start showing you some java code so everything will actually start to make sense thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video